So we've come across a fantastic mushroom here. You can see it hits a certain set of rules when we're out foraging for mushrooms. You can see it's got a cap, it's got a stem, and it's got a spongy underside. This pulls it down to the bleats really quickly. We've got a really nice rule once we find those three things. Cap, spongy side, stem. It's coming out the ground here. So the rule that we follow with these ones is red or blue may make you spew. So within this family, there's some of the mushrooms that have red on them. There's some of the mushrooms that when you cut them, stain blue or have blue staining on them. Uh, and that's rapid blue staining. Um, and what we do in this family is we steer clear of any red ones or any that stain blue rapidly because there's a couple that can make you sick. And that makes us safe. Apart from, really annoyingly, this one. It's called the Bitter Bleat. It doesn't make a spew. So if we were to ingest this, it's not toxic in any way. It's just called the Bitter Bleat because it's incredibly bitter to consume. If I was to slice up a bit of this, and let's say I had a mixed bleat, so let's say I found five or six different types of bleats, porcini, orange birch bleat, a couple of different types, which would make a really, really good dish. And I slice this cap up and put it in with that. As it cooks, it becomes more and more bitter, so it would just make the whole dish really bitter. It's one of those that people will often pick it, mistaking it for porcini, um, and you'll only do it once probably, because it's so bitter that you'll make sure to learn it for next time. It's also one of those that's just really disappointing when you find, because I found one down here, down here, down there. I would say I probably found 30, just in this little patch of woodland, all about this size or a bit smaller, which if it wasn't the bit of elite, would make fantastic amounts of good, you know, top notch food. It would be gourmet mushroom. Sadly, like I say, this one's the bitter bleat. Not toxic, but just not great to eat. So let's have a look at the differences between this one so you can make sure you don't pick this one when you're out picking the other bleats. So to start with, no red on it. Um, if we cut it in half, it doesn't stain blue. For technicolor ones, that would be staining blue instantly. In fact, it would be blue already. Um, it has a kind of penny bun -ish, so a sep or porcini-ish coloured cap, um, but you can see the stem here is much darker, um, so a porcini would have almost like a pale white stem, and it has white reticulations around the top on a porcini as well, but one of the keys for identifying this one is that if you look on the underside, you can see this spore section, so this spongy section on the underside, um, is slightly pinkish, so it starts to turn pink with age. Um, and that's the key for me for identifying this one out from the other beliefs that are edible. If you're ever in doubt, you can literally just slice a little bit off, give it a little munch, and if it's a bitter beliefs, it will taste incredibly bitter. So the extra rule I've added onto the red and blue is, if it's red or blue, it may make you spew, have a little taste, and if it's bitter, avoid it. If it was porcini, you can eat that fresh, and it would be unbelievable. Um, yeah, so that one's the bitter bleat, an absolute 100% disappointment when you're out foraging and absolutely gutting because you see it and you think, great, edible bleat, but this pink tinging tells us it's a bitter bleat and this would absolutely ruin our dish. We do not want to be out picking bitter bleats.